Though just about every bird watcher enjoys seeing hawks, it's not always easy to name them with confidence. They're often seen in flight, at some distance, and for less time than we might prefer. A good rule to remember when trying to identify an unfamiliar hawk is this. Chances are it's a red tail, even if its tail doesn't look red. That's something of an overstatement, of course, but red-tailed hawk is the raptor that most North Americans see most often, and many of us aren't prepared to recognize them when we don't see their namesake field mark. When you do see a typical-looking adult red-tailed hawk well, it's pretty darn easy to identify. However, many of your experiences with the species won't be like this. First, it's somewhat difficult to say what a typical red tail really is. The species varies in plumage from black to frosty white, with most birds falling somewhere in the middle. All young red tails, for their first year or so, have plain grayish-brown tails with a variable amount of banding. Some adults, especially of the uncommon Harlan's form, never get red tails at all. Even adults with red tails are only truly red on the top side. The underside may look anywhere from faintly to obviously reddish, depending on light conditions. So how do you go about identifying this bird? It can help to start with the classic hawk encounter, a bird soaring overhead. Many new birders wish for flying hawks to perch, so they can study the birds at leisure. But flying hawks are generally easier to identify than perch ones, actually, because they give you more clues to work with once you learn to see them. Red-tailed hawk is placed in the genus Buteo, and it's the archetype of its tribe. Short of tail and broad of wing, this bird is built to soar. Its wings usually show a distinct roundness in the secondaries, while still being rather long overall. Compare the red tail's wing shape to two of its cousins, the broadwing hawk and the Swainson's hawk. Broadwing has shorter wings, both in proportion and absolutely, but their roundness is more evenly tapered, not as bulging. The Swainson's hawk is a little bigger than a red-tailed, and its wings are quite long and thin for a buteo. While we're looking at this comparison, note that the red-tailed hawk has a rather obvious thick, dark border to the front edge of its underwings that these other two species lack. This dark border, which is referred to as a patagial bar, can be a much firmer foundation on which to build a case for red-tailed hawk than tail color. The main instance where the patagial bar won't help you is on very dark birds, which tend to be more common in the West. Thankfully, many of those birds will show red tails, and they'll still have the distinctive red-tailed shape, which you will soon enough learn to recognize like you recognize the shape and posture of a lifelong friend. Two other raptors that many North Americans encounter frequently are the sharp-shinned hawk and the cooper's hawk. In addition to being common and widespread, they are the species most likely to appear at bird feeders, hoping to dine on the other patrons. As both are excipiters, they have fairly short, rounded wings, but long tails. Telling coops from sharpies has long been a classic North American identification puzzle. Even the pros sometimes see birds that leave them unsure. The secret is to learn all the marks and really look at each bird you see. Rarely can an accurate identification of a pair this close be made on the basis of a single character. Coops are bigger than sharpies, but size can be hard to judge on lone birds. Plus, a big immature female sharpshin will be close in size to a compact adult male coopers. That may sound crazy at first, but in most raptors, females are a bit bigger than males, and young birds, once fledged, are slightly larger than their parents. Here's a good example of this surprising size differential, a shot of a father peregrine falcon flying with one of his daughters. The adult male is on the left, the juvenile female on the right. Whatever their age, the classic field mark for separating sharp shins from coopers is a straight versus rounded tail tip, and this can indeed be a useful character, but head size is even better. Cooper's hawks have bigger heads that stick out much more prominently than the smaller heads of sharp shins. This effect is accentuated by the characteristic angles at which they hold their wings. Cooper's more straight, sharp shin hunched forward at the wrists. The rub with shape-based marks like these is that they are subject to variation as the birds do different kinds of flying. Either species in full soar, like the bird on the left, 
will appear rather round-tailed, straight-winged, and large-headed, lending them a coopish aspect. Conversely, both species will look rather sharpish in a dive, with their wings pulled in and tail folded. As with all worthwhile pursuits, the key to successfully learning raptor identification is practice. Over a few years, you can get to the point where you'll be quite confident in identifying most of the hawks you see, most of the time. But there will always be more to learn, one of the things that makes birdwatching such a rewarding, lifelong interest. <laughs>